What's going on my dudes, Shensley11 here and welcome back to another episode in the A to Z series where we are going through every single champion in League of Legends and giving you a basic or beginner's guide on each of them. In today's episode, we're going to be showing you how to play Nautilus support for beginners. So we're going to be going through all of Nautilus's runes, all of his builds and most importantly all of Nautilus's abilities. So if you enjoy the video, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and check out the second channel. Link is in the description. But for now, let's go through Nautilus. So we're going to start off with an overview, followed by the runes build, and then all of his abilities. So um, I'll have little captions, or whatever they're called, down the bottom, so you can chapter select, so you can click on what you're most interested in. But let's go through him overall. So Nautilus is a fantastic support who's um, quite tanky, and he's going to be your front line. What makes him so scary is his CC. He has CC on his passive. His Q... Um, his E also has some slow and then obviously his big ultimate which sends people uh, people getting knocked up constantly so he has a lot of CC a lot of engage uh, he has a good amount of peel with his uh, passives um, root so he's got a little bit of everything he's one of those engage supports quite fun to play um, would highly recommend um, trying him out if you haven't already uh, and he's just cool last champion look at him he's a big dude with a big anchor uh, with a, I think it's like a underwater scuba diving gear. Um, so fantastic champ. Um, level one, obviously, when you're playing support, if the jungler's starting this side, you want to give him a leash. Then move over to your lane. So we'll go through the laning phase now. So the laning phase with Nautilus is um, uh, is not tricky. It's just you need to know when to go in. Um, basically, he's an all-in champ. So he's one of those champs where you hit a Q with your or your dredge line. As you can see there, I miss one unfortunately on the Kaiser. And if you hit it, uh, you can um, go all in with Ignite and just try and get a kill. Um, against poke lanes, obviously you want to be trying not to take poke. If you are going to be receiving a spell, make sure to hit your W to get the shield. We'll go through all the abilities in a lot more detail in a moment so you know exactly what I'm talking about. But make sure you use your W when you can. You want to be trying to um, press up so you can put pressure on the enemies with your Q. Uh, you want to be making sure you're you know, collecting minions with your uh, support items so you're getting gold and also healing your ADC. Uh, and then once you get um, level 6, you have an insane power spike because your ultimate is so good. Um, but essentially, you have so much CC. You want to be trying to peel your support as well um, by you know providing CC so they can deal the damage. You don't deal too much damage. You do a little bit. Uh, most of the damage early you'll deal is through auto attacks and you ignite if you're going to do an all-in quite early. Um, but that's just a little bit of a... Um, a little bit of a guide to the laning phase, nothing too advanced. Just just try to um, engage when you think there's a good opportunity. Like now, we can see we just layer CC with a Q. If you hit a good Q, you can flash in with Ignite. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to die, but I think I think the Varus may be able to pick something up if he's if he's patient and gets uh, the Kaiser if she steps up. But unfortunately, a little bit too aggressive there. The flash was probably not necessary, but you can see Nautilus. You're trying to set up plays for your team. Um, bit of a bad example there, but don't worry, we, we come back in this game and have a good game. But anyway, guys, uh, as always, the gameplay is not the most important thing with these videos. It's just to get through all the champion's abilities, runes, whatnot, so you know what's going on if you try to give them a go. So, let's go through Nautilus's runes. So, Nautilus has um, a quite simple rune setup. Um, Aftershock is your keystone. The reason why you take Aftershock is quite self-explanatory. I'll read it to you. Um... After mobilizing champions, which is most of your abilities, uh, you increase your armor magic resist um, and then explode dealing magic damage to my enemy. So if you hit your Q or your E or your ultimate, you're going to be proccing aftershock. And then when you go in, you get, you know, you're getting tanky stats and then um, you're going to do an explosion after when you get on top of them, which is basically what you want to be doing, right? Get on top of them, slow them, stun them so your ADC can do the damage. You can see here I'm um, trying to help the uh, jungler get the scuttle crab. So I land the CC for them so they um, can make sure we get them. So part of the role for support in general um, is to help your jungler as well. Um, as well as your ADC, if you can get your jungler fed when on, then they're on this side of the map, then you can usually carry games through support that way. Just be aware that if this kind of stuff happens, your, your ADC can get um, collapsed on like they were this time. Uh, so the Varus dies, but we end up getting an assist uh, for the team in the, through the mid lane and the... Uh, jungle so a little bit sad i should have pinged my adc back there it's unfortunate again the enemy bot lane come to join the fire and then we can just cc and peel for the the diana so she can pick up all the kills so sorry back to the runes we'll go through them now properly so yes aftershock 
as we hit another nice hook there and we get a kill for ourselves. So we go Aftershock, we get Shield Bash, Shield Bash rather, while Shielded gain uh, 1 to 10 Magic Resist based on level, um, which is fantastic. Obviously, Nasus has an on-demand shield on his W. Sorry, not Nasus. Nasus was the last video we did. Nautilus. Sorry if I've been saying Nasus. Nautilus. Uh, gains a shield on his W, so that's why that synergizes as well. Bone plating after taking damage the next three spells, you receive receive uh, less damage, which is great for Nautilus, who's a tank. Unflinching gives you the tenacity, and then you want to go Inspiration Secondary with the Biscuit Delivery and Cosmic Insight for the Summoner spell and Item Haste, um, as we will be building uh, Locker of Iron Solari. Um, so you can see here again, just going over to the Kaiser, auto attacking to stun, uh, sorry, to root. And letting the Varus do the damage that way. So you can see quite a simple lane setup. Especially if there's going to be like a 2v1 in that situation. Then just go straight in. Uh, champions like Morgana and Siva. A little bit of a counter because they have spell shields. So just be aware of that. Um, if you see those go on cooldown. Start using your Q on them instead. Uh, so that were the runes. Now let's go through the uh, level up order. Or the ability order. So these are the abilities. Um, you know the order in which you level up. And which you max first. So level 1. Uh, there's that spell, sh spell shield I was talking about. So she uh, stops the uh, root from occurring after she spell shields. Um, if she spell shields before the Q hits, rather. So you see Vi is coming to gank. So we eat the Q, we use the E. We're just trying to do as much damage and peel, uh, you know, run away kite. So the ADC can maybe get a kill. If they get away, then that's not too bad. Diana is coming for the counter gank, though. So she should be able to clean up. So as tank support, engage supports, that's an unfortunate Q. Um... You might die a little bit more than um, other champions because you're trying to set up for your team. Now, don't just die for no reason. Um, uh, we'll go through the skill order in a moment. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Don't just die for no reason. You want to make sure you're dying for something good, right? So if you can die and get yourself two, your team two or three kills, then it's worth it, right? Um, so just keep that in mind when you're playing these engagey supports that provide CC and tank stats for your team. Because if the enemy team wastes all their stuff on you, then they're not going to hit their, your carries with it, essentially. So, let's go through the skill order. So level 1, you want to take Q. That's your dredge line, your, your hook. Uh, w, you want to take second at level 2, which is your shield. We'll go through all the abilities in more detail in a moment. E is what you want to take le level 3, which is an AoE slowing ability that does damage away from you. And then you want to take a point in your ultimate at level 6, 11, and 16. As always, you want to be maxing your Q first, maxing your W second, maxing your W last. As we get a nice hook and um, uh, E onto the Morgana to get the kill there. So we're 2, 2, and 2. Bit of an aggressive lane, which is great. Um, a lot of fun to watch. Uh, and hopefully we can win this game. So that's all the level up order. Um, the Vi is back, but the Diana is here. So we use the hook. We use the E to slow. She gets a nice ultimate, pulls them both in. Uh, you can see here, I flash away to try and get away from the Kaiser. Um, I stayed there a little bit too long. I should have flashed earlier. But it's probably going to allow Diana to get another kill. So again, we die for another kill for our jungler. It's probably worth it. Um, especially because the ADC is going to come here, collect this whole wave un un um, unmatched. So we've already died three times in eight minutes, but uh, we've gotten a lot of stuff for our team. And we're going to end up picking another dragon. Morgana with a nice uh, Zonyas. So... Let's go through the build um, as we go towards the dragon. Uh, let's just let's just watch this fight quickly, and then we'll go through the build. So we're heading over towards the Morgana to kind of help the drag uh, help the dragon fight. Varus is here. It's a three v one. She's dead. Wait for the spell sheet to go down. We use our hook. We use our auto attack to, to root them in place, and we run away, and we just move on. Let someone else get the kill. Again, as Nautilus being a support, you don't want to be taking any of the kills. Really, if you get one or two an accident, things happen. Uh, but he is not one of those champions where you can take kills, and it's okay. Nautilus is tanky. Tank items are cheap. Cheaper, or they're more effective, uh, so you don't need as much uh, gold as normal. Uh, you can see here I like to roam a lot when I play Nautilus, go to the mid lane, make sure I help the jungler out. Uh, that's just how I find I carry on Nautilus, by just getting around the map and um, doing stuff like that. So we get another kill for our team, and now we're going to head over back to bottom. So let's go through the build. So we're going to be taking um, Ignite and Flash. Ignite is very crucial on Nautilus as for the all-ins in the bot lane. Um, and then Flash is a must as on pretty much all champions, so pretty self-explanatory. You want to be starting your Relic Shield, which is a support item, which basically means you can execute minions when they're low to give your ADC health, and it gives you uh, some gold. And remember, you want to be taking these support items because you're not going to be farming. You can see there we executed that minion. We got 14 gold for CSing it, but we also 
the Varus gets the 14 gold as well, so we share the gold. Um, so he doesn't miss out on anything. But we get extra gold and we end up healing the Varus. Plus, it has like a quest line attached to it. So once you finish um, gaining 500 gold by doing that, you know, like executing minions, as you can see, we're going to execute a cannon. We get 75 gold. That provides 75 to our objective. It upgrades into the um, ball work of the mountain, which gives you the warding item and it upgrades it basically gives you extra stats. You can see here we go for the um, the dive. Unfortunately, I missed my hook, so the Varus ends up taking the tower. Uh, so we end up going one for one. We get a tower plate each. So I'm going to go onto the Morgana, just trying to trade the kills, but it looks like I'm going to die here because she's got more health than me. So a little bit of a failed dive, a little bit too aggressive. I missed my hook. If I hit the hook, I would have taken tower aggro. It would have been allowed Varus to survive longer, and we potentially could have got out there. So my bad. Um, next, so the first item you want to be building on Nautilus himself is the uh, Locket of Iron Solari, which is an active item. It gives you, obviously, uh, ability, haste, health, armor, and magic resist, but it gives you a active, which gives you and nearby allies a big shield, which is fantastic. Um, you want to be getting plated steel caps for your boots. Uh, you can go Moby boots if you feel like roaming a lot. Um, it's just up to you how your playstyle is. I like the extra tank stats. Depending on the matchup, if they don't have any um, auto-attacking threats, then you can maybe get uh, Moby boots. But then if they don't have that, they probably got a lot of magic resist. And you might want to get Merc treads. So I'll leave the boots up to you. For a standard play, I'd go for the uh, uh, steel caps. Uh, then you want to go Lock Iron Slurry, as I mentioned earlier. Zeke's Convergence is your next main item. Uh, so after Zeke's... So Zeke's gives you like a, an active where you can put it on your ADC and make them your accomplice, uh, which means every time you mobilize an enemy champion, uh, they're going to be applying on-hit uh, magic damage. So it's a very, very good item to put on your ADC because they're going to be attacking a lot and you're going to be uh, applying immobilizations a lot. So it's a nice support item. Uh, then you want to go Thorn Mail and Knight's Vow which is another conjure item. Um, so you can see here, they're going to go all in, engage on my uh, ADC, which is quite unfortunate. And we're going to use our E to slow them to get away. We do hook the Morgana under tower. So she takes the tower shot. We root her a little bit too slow. So unfortunately, we can't get the... Um, uh, we can't get the uh, root under tower, but we end up getting the Kaiser because they failed the dive. So if I hooked the Morgana and then auto-attacked her immediately, we may have been able to... Um, uh, get her with the tower shot. So we can see we flash hook. She ends up flashing away. I thought she'd be under tower range with, with that hook, which is just a little bit unfortunate. And then she tags us with the Q and we die. So a bit of an insane laning phase here, but I hope you enjoy um, the gameplay. Um, so that's the build, guys. Other items you can go are the uh, Force of Nature. You can go uh, Frozen Heart, Random Resident, just basically armor uh, items. It depends on the enemy team. If they've got a lot of magic resist, you can get a Spirit Visage. Um... But you are getting some magic resist through uh, your locket of Iron Solari. Only 30 though, so be aware of that. You may have to pick up another magic resist item if they have a stack of magic resist. Okay, so that's all of the build. Um, and uh, all the all the runes and the ability order. So now we can focus on the abilities themselves. So overall, um, Nautilus's abilities are, are quite simple and uh, easy to understand so he's he's a pretty easy champion for beginners to pick up combined with the fact that he's quite tanky uh, means that he's not particularly punishing so he's easy to pick up and learn um you can see here we're going for a dive we've got a big stack guys is low uh we're just gonna go in we tried to auto attack him we canceled the auto attack the reason why we just open up with the auto attack is because it roots are in place which is her passive uh, his passive and we'll go through that right now so nautilus's passive is called staggering blow so Nasus's basic attacks deal um, bonus physical damage based on level and root the target for 0.75 to 1.5 seconds based on level. This uh, the effect cannot be... Uh, cannot be uh, you can't put this effect on the same target more than every 6 seconds. Okay, So essentially, every single auto attack Nautilus does roots the enemy and does physical bonus physical damage. However, you can't reapply this bonus to the same target within six seconds. So you can go and auto attack five different champions and root them all uh, as fast as you can auto attack them. However, you can't reroute the same target after unless it's been six seconds. Okay? And remember it also applies bonus physical damage. So basically this is a really strong passive um, and what makes Nautilus fantastic support. This provides him with with peel, 
Because if someone's trying to chase down your ADC and you just auto attack them, you stagger them or you you know you root them. That's the law. You stagger them. Root means they can't move, so they can't dash or move or uh, flash. Um, actually, I don't know if they can flash. I don't think they can flash. It looks like they can't flash. So they're just locked into place. Um, they can still use abilities and auto attack, I believe, uh, because it's not a full on stun. However, the root means they can't move. So you can see here, we go in, we use our, our hook on the Morgana. We auto attack her to slow her down. We use her ultimate on top of her. A little bit of a waste of an ultimate, bad ultimate, but it is what it is. I use my Q to get out. Um, and then my team cleans up there. Um, so you can see here, the early lead we've provided for our team. I know it's not just me doing it, but the early lead we've helped our team get has allowed us to win team fights early. So we're going to uh, get a nice team fight there and win that. We're going to push out mid. We get a nice cannon for ourselves. We have a bit of a Sona, uh, two supports playing uh, in the mid lane here. And we're going to get our revenge and try and carry the game on this and get a tower. Um, just remember, you can... Uh, with your Relic Shield procs, you can execute minions and give the gold to the Sona as well. So we can get this tower for free. So yeah, it also with the Staggering Blow, um, you can, you know, you've got good chase potential because if you get on top of someone and auto-attack them, you root them in place so then your team can follow up with the chase, right? So fantastic passive, very easy to understand. You you um, you root enemies when you auto-attack them if you haven't auto-attacked them in the last six seconds. And it also applies bonus physical damage. So let's go through the Q, which is um, Nautilus's uh, first castable ability. I think I got a feeling I keep saying uh, Nasus. I literally just recorded the Nasus commentary. I apologize if I've said Nasus a few times. Um, so Nautilus's Q is called Dreadline. So Nautilus hurls his anchor in a target direction that stops on the first enemy or terrain hit. If the anchor hits an enemy, it deals magic damage, reveals them, dragging them towards Nautilus while he also dashes towards them. After that, afterwards the target is rooted for 0.1 seconds. So in that little split second, you've got time to auto attack and reapply the root if you haven't auto attacked him in the last six seconds to further get the CC chain going. Um, remember, it's also a um, um, like a, it's a knock up when you pull them. So uh, it's it's awesome. Uh, more CC and they're locked and they can't move. So it's just a fantastic CC ability uh, hook. One of the hook abilities in the game. So it's really, really cool. If the anchor... This is what makes it kind of unique though. If the anchor hits uh, terrain, Nautilus dashes to the location and 50% of the cooldown and mana cost are refunded. Um, so that's kind of awesome as a good engage tool. I wouldn't really use it as an engage tool if you want to... Uh, use it to hook someone themselves. It's a good escape tool. It's a good. It's good to get uh, to lane faster. You can see here, Morgana's used her um, her shield, so we can go straight onto the Kaiser. And we can see we we're focusing on the Kaiser. We're auto attacking her, getting her with a Q. We're using our dredge line to get the slows, uh, to get the hooks to to close the gap and get on top of them, so we can auto attack this to root them. So that was fantastic. Um, also, Nautilus is unable to move or attack during Dreadline, like when it's in flight. However, you can cast your W and your E, which we'll go through in a moment. So uh, just keep that in mind. So basically, your hook, you want to be using that as your engage, uh, as your pick tool, um, and as your gap closer. So it's a really, really strong ability, and it's your first max, and it's really, really fun to use. As you can see there, we hit the, the Vi, we root her with an auto attack, we flash out, and uh, we get a perfect dive off as we take most of the tower shots so our team stay alive and we end up getting another tower so fantastic dive i think we only lost one there for three or something like that and we're going to probably get the cast if we had hooker valid we might have been able to get a or our dredge line rather next we're going to go through the w which is called titan's wrath so nautilus shields himself for six seconds while the shield holds his basic attacks play uh, apply pain of wrath to the targets surrounding the enemies uh so the pain basically there was magic damage over time. Um, so as I was saying with uh, Titan's Wrath, so uh, the target suffers magic damage over time and then half is dealt immediately and the other half is dealt after 1.25 seconds. Um, also, Titan's Wrath is an auto-attack reset. Uh, so that's quite unique and I actually didn't know that before making this guide. So if you auto-attack, use your W, you can auto-attack uh, really fast after as well. So next, we're going to go through uh, the E, which is called Riptide, a very, very simple ability. So Nautilus sends out three waves of explosions that radiate from him over uh, 0 0.5 seconds, each dealing magic damage to enemies hit and slowing them. Um, and the amount decays uh, over 1.5 seconds. So this is great because it emanates away from Nautilus. So if they're running away from you, 
It's catching up to them and slowing them over and over again. So it's fantastic again for chasing. You want to be using your dredge line to get on top of them and then using your riptide straight away. So you slow them. Also using your titan's raft to give you the shield. Um, that's the basic combo on Nautilus. Uh, so you get in, get the root down with your auto attack. Um, use your shield, use your W, use your E, which is the riptide to slow them down as well and deal some more magic damage. So very, very simple ability. Last but not least, we'll go through the depth charge, which is... Uh, Nautilus's ultimate, which is a very, very fun ultimate. Nautilus sends out a depth charge that create, uh, chases the uh, target enemy champion, accelerating over time, creating eruptions every 0 0.265 uh, seconds. Uh, also gaining sight. So any enemies that are hit by those um, eruptions on the way to the big eruption at the end, which we'll explain in a moment, are dealt magic damage, knocked up and stunned. Upon reaching its primary target, the depth charge gets to them and then it does the big knock-up and a big explosion. So the damage is increased, they get a longer stun and a bigger knock-up. So that's basically the ultimate. It's a very, very simple ultimate to use. You want to be using it to people in the back of the fight. So then the depth charge as it goes through to them is knocking up everyone on the way. Uh, that way you can disrupt the most amount of enemies in the team fight. In this game, he was using it to the people that were on top of, which was kind of... Uh, not as efficient, but it still works if you want to chain CC them so your team can pick that specific champion. So anyway, guys, that's Nautilus. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, a little bit of a quick game there. We had to show these abilities um, with just some background gameplay. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, Nautilus is a fun champ. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching the gameplay. And remember, if you have any questions at all, uh, I'll be happy to answer any of them in the comment section down below. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button if you did enjoy. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.